I want to welcome every single person that is watching us online. Those are in the second sanctuary, first sanctuary. May the Lord's Spirit be with you. And we're going to go into the Word of God. If you have your Bibles, you can open up to Luke chapter 17, verse 21. And Jesus said these words, Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Church, I want to say these words. What is going on on the inside of you is way more important than what's going on on the outside of you. You got to hear me out. Catch this. What is going on on the inside of you is way more important than what's going on on the outside. God and the enemy wants to put something within you. Okay? God and the enemy, they want to, both of them want to put something inside of you. And each one of us, we are a product of what's been put inside of us. From the age of growing up, you know, your mom, your dad, they instilled something inside of you. You know, the things that you watch, the things that you heard. You're a product by default or on purpose of what's been put inside of you. Yeah. The way you think, the way you analyze, the way... You're just a product of what's been put inside of you. Like it or don't like it. Each one of us were a product of what's been put inside of us. You know, uh, people with big bucks, businesses, they pay a lot of money. If you look at the Super Bowl, you know, 15 seconds or I don't know how many seconds of the commercial. Lots of money. Think about it. Why would... Uh, a business pays so much money for 15 seconds of your time to flash something before your eyes, some kind of images. Why? Well, because something goes inside of you, like it or don't like it. When you drive a car and there's these big old billboards, you know, they're there, um, they're there for a reason. And so when you're driving and your eyes look at that thing, something goes inside of you, Coca-Cola or Pepsi. Something goes inside of you. Big bucks are being spent to put something inside of you. And you know, um, in the 1920s is when television was introduced. 1920s. Do you know what TV stands for? Huh? Tell a vision. Tell a vision. Just as in the Bible, it says, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit and your young men will see visions and dreams. And your old, well, your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Meaning God is going to show something to men and women of God. But the devil also wants to show you something and put something inside of you also. And if we look at society, how society has degraded, you know, 1920s, the television was introduced into the home. And people would spend hours and hours and hours watching that thing. And slowly, just like a frog being boiled without even knowing it, um, things were placed inside of, um, you know. The average screen, this is 2023 we're, we're now in. The average screen time for Americans is six, is seven hours and four minutes. The average screen time globally is six hours and 58 minutes. So about seven hours roughly both in America and worldwide. So if you look at how, how uh, society has degraded, all, you know, the things that were crazy back then, right now it's normal. <laughs> the things that were like, you know, would, would, would shock the people in the 1920s, right now it's normal. What happened is because something was placed inside of us and right now we think it's, it's no big deal. Just as the word of God is a seed, it's, a seed is 
is very, very small, but when it grows, it grows into a tree. When you listen to the word of God, something gets planted inside of it, right? It might not look nothing, but over time it grows. The kingdom of God is inside of you. And just as the, and just as our God, the Father, has good plans for you. The Bible says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you, to give you a future and a hope. Well, the devil also has plans for you. And both of them want the screen of your heart. And if both of them can plant something inside of you, your future can see where it goes. The word of God is a seed. And the things we wash, the things that go into the gates, there's the eye gates, the ear gates, you know, the five senses we, we interact with this world where there's also, there's gates we can allow things to go inside of us. And garbage in is garbage out. Good stuff in is good stuff out. You know, we believers... Some of us, we think Christianity is hard. Anybody think like that is hard? Well, I'll tell you what's hard. What's hard is filling yourself up with garbage and trying to live holy. Now that's hard. That's very hard because you're trying to please God, but you filled yourself up with junk and all you're doing is you're fighting the junk that, that, that you allowed to come inside of you. Now that is difficult because all you're doing is doing warfare because you want to please God, but you're also pleasing your flesh. Whatever you put inside of you is, most of the times, is what will come out. What's been put inside of you? Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 says this, Guard your heart with all diligence, for from it flows the springs of life. Another translation says this, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. You know, when there's something valuable, like the bank, you know, it has lots of money. Sometimes there'll be guards standing, make sure that there would be no intruder to come in and steal and rob that place. Diamonds are very valuable. They are guarded with lasers, a piece of rock for crying out loud. Yes, it's, it's, it's found somewhere. Who knows where it's found, but it's a rock. And many of us believers, we open up our heart to anything, not knowing that our hearts are more valuable than that diamond. Our heart, our mind is more valuable than a piece of rock. I don't care if that rock flew from Mars from the meteorite and hit the earth and it's worth like millions of dollars, but it's like a rock for crying out loud. Your heart, your mind is more valuable than a piece of rock. The people of this earth, they got lasers to guard that thing. And, and, and what are we doing? We're opening ourselves up, spending these time on the screen time, opening ourselves up to junk, not knowing that something by default is coming inside. Garbage is coming inside and you're wondering why I can't live this holy life. Why is it so hard when I lay hands on the sick and nothing happens? <laughs> the kingdom of God is within you. You need to guard your heart. Your heart is more valuable. You cannot open it up to anything. You know, when God revealed this to me, that there's a message behind the things we watch, that the things from Hollywood are not just little Hollywood stuff. There's lace. The stuff is laced over there, okay? It's after your children. It's after, it's to put a deposit of an agenda inside so there's there's a spirit behind that God and the devil they want the screen of your heart you can't just watch anything we carry victory on the inside of us first before victory on the outside will manifest we carry defeat on the inside first before defeat on the outside will manifest. Look at the people that take their lives. Do you think they wake up one day and says, you know what? Today will be a great day to take my life. No. So 
something was put inside of him and they were marinating them, marinating them, marinating and the enemy was just feeding them and feeding them and feeding them. And you know what? They, they, they got fed up so much. Maybe they didn't receive deliverance. I don't know what happened, but they took their life. It didn't happen just because they woke up and they decided to, you know what? I don't want to live anymore. Something was placed inside of them. Come on. Ask yourself this question. What is inside of me? And now analyze yourself. What's inside of it? Because you're a product of what's been put inside of you by default or on purpose. What's inside of you? Scan yourself. If we look in the Old Testament, there was a man, Achan. He was delivered by God from Egypt. They were going into the promised land. He was a warrior in the army of God. And he hid the forbidden stuff in his tent. What was inside hidden destroyed him. A matter of time passed and him, his family, the belongings all perished. Now there's another person. Her name is Rahab. She was a prostitute. Come on. Very, very bad background, you know. Prostitute. You don't want that name under your, your name. But the Bible says that she hid the spies. You know, Pastor Vlad last week preached about it. The word of God in prayer. She hid the spies, and because of what she hid on the inside, her family was saved. Why? Do you know that she was doomed for destruction? Because Jericho was doomed for destruction. God says, annihilate the whole place. Don't let no one survive. But because of what she hid inside, she was spared. What's going on on the inside of you? And now, make a, make a, um, analyze. The Bible actually teaches, tells us to examine ourselves. Do we have any hidden lust, depression, unforgiveness? Unforgiveness will kill you guys. Slowly. It's poison. Jealousy, envy, anger, rage, rage sexual images, unbelief. Doubt, double-mindedness, impurity. What's on the inside? David said these words in Psalms 119 verse 11. He says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. David made a decision to hide the word of God inside. What are you hiding? The spirit of God? Faith, self-control, goodness, patience, love, sound mind, gentleness, kindness, godliness, the fear of God. The kingdom of God is on the inside of us. It's very important to, to analyze what's going on inside. Because yes, you might look great on the outside, but your insides will catch up to your outside. Look in the Old Testament. Abraham and his wife, they were naturally barren, meaning they couldn't produce any children in the natural. But see what God did, what God deposited on the inside. You know, the Bible calls Abraham, Abraham his name was Abram first. He, he called Abraham a man of faith, actually the father of faith, meaning the father is, you know, if we're children, then he's the father, meaning that someone to look up to. But he didn't receive faith just out of nowhere. Catch this. What did God do? This is what God did. I'll show you. And you can go in the Old Testament after this service and you can look in the, read it and you can see. But this is what God did. He says, Abram, you're no longer will be Abram. You'll be Abraham. And this is what God says. He says, look at the stars. You see that? That's going to be your children. Look at the sand. You see that? That's going to be your children. You see, God deposited in something inside of Abraham. See, faith didn't come out of nowhere. 
it was deposited by God. And the Bible says Abraham believed and it was credited to him righteousness. He didn't wake up one day and just like, I'm, I'm a father of faith. No, God deposited something in, into Abraham and he believed, you know, back then they were, it was a desert and every time he walked, he saw, he saw the sand and he's like, that's my children. And every time he walked, because in the desert, the skies are so bright, the stars are so bright and day and night, he would see, he would see, he would see and the image of victory was on the inside of him and yes, it took 25 years, but let me tell you something. God manifested the children in Abraham's life, but it didn't come out of nowhere. Something was deposited inside of him. What is being deposited inside of you? God and the enemy wants the screen of your heart. Faith came to Abraham because something was put inside of him. Now, let's look at Adam and Eve. They're in the garden, nice and naked, walking around, eating fruit, and then the snake comes. Did God really say, and now we see doubt was, doubt was deposited into Eve. Did God really say, let, let me tell you, it didn't come out of nowhere. Some kind of information was spoken. Some kind of something was deposited, some, something was transferred, and now we see Adam and Eve messed up, separated from the glory of God. What? Did it just happen out of nowhere? No. Something was deposited on the inside. What's going on inside of us is way more important than what's happening on the outside. Faith came because something was deposited in Abraham. And doubt came because something was deposited. Don't think that what you watch is just nothing or what you hear is just nothing. It all goes in somewhere. Jacob in the Old Testament was tending Laban's sheep. And God gave him a dream because you know what? His wages were being changed a lot of times. And Laban was cheating Jacob out of his, uh, out of, you know, he was just working hard. But anyways, God gives him a dream. And Jacob's like, Laban, I'll tend your sheep if you give me the speckled and the spotted sheep. And then God gives him a dream. Put some sticks in front of them when they're mating. And the sheep will see that and they produce after that kind. And that's what was happening. They were producing speckled or spotted sheep. And Jacob had a lot of livestock because, because the sheep were, was, were, were producing what they were seeing. So whatever picture is in your heart, most likely that is what you're going to be producing. If you have a picture of victory on the inside of you, most likely you're going to be producing victory. But if you have a picture of defeat on the inside of you, most likely, that's what you're going to produce. That's what I said. God and the enemy, they both want the screen of your heart. Proverbs 23, 7 says this. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8 says this. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Where are you going to see God? You're going to see him in your heart. Your heart is the contact point where you meet with God. But if you got junk in your heart, who are you going to, what voice are you going to listen to? Take inventory of what's inside. You know, when we travel, we go into the airport and we go through security. You know, the bags get scanned. You take off your shoes. You take off your belt. You, everything empty is in the pocket. You stand over there, zing, zing. And they check if there's nothing there. So you didn't bring any weapons into the plane. And, uh, but we people... We don't set up security systems in our mind. We don't set up security system in our heart, in our th in what we watch. The average person spends seven hours a day on the screen. And you know what? You think you're, you're, you think it's nothing, but let me tell you something. Something is going inside. 
and you're wondering, why is my faith so weak? Well, maybe because you're feeding off the wrong stuff. Maybe instead of feeding off the Word seven hours a day, but you're watching the screen seven hours a day, and yes, it's funny, it's great, or it's, it's entertaining, but your spiritual life, how is it when you lay hands on the sick? How is it when you try to drive out a demon? How is it when you want to walk in victory? How is it when you want to be a man of faith, a woman of faith? Don't think that you're going to wake up and just become a man of God, a woman of God. It doesn't happen by default. Something goes inside. And you need to... And you need to not just allow anything to go inside. Your heart, your mind is very precious. As they said, God has a plan for your life, but so is the enemy. You want God's plans and purposes to succeed, not the enemy's. I want to share you a story. You know, at, at the age of 16, 17, and 18, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to follow him and had an encounter with God um, a radical encounter. God marked me in a deep way and I really, really wanted to follow God. But I was, uh, I was in a family of nine. I was the youngest in my family. I, come, I have three sisters and I have five brothers, six with me. And so I was the youngest. And at that time, I used to work construction with my brother. And I remember uh, sitting, in, sitting in his truck because he would ride the truck. I'm the youngest and he drives, you know, in his car. And he would, he would have bad music playing and there was a lot of cuss words uh, actually I used to listen to bad music and cuss words back then I used to cuss a lot actually BC days God delivered me but when I gave my life to Christ I didn't want that junk to go inside of me and I remember uh, being in that car you know you're the youngest you're not going to turn the radio down first of all it's not your car he's older you're younger it's his car his truck okay so I'm like okay and I remember being at construction, at constructions, people cuss a lot, like bad, bad. And I remember, you know, your whole day, you're, 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 old, you, you're around this atmosphere, and all that stuff goes in your head. And I remember Friday, Friday night, it was uh, youth, and I would come up to the front, lift up my hands, but I got cuss words in my mind, like, so much. Why? Because I'd been in that junk. So I'm like, okay, God, what do I do? So back then, we didn't have what we had right now. Back then, we had CD players. So I'm like, okay, you want to listen to that junk? I got my CD player. I got two headphones in. I put good stuff in. You know, he has bad stuff going in him. I have good stuff going in me. And later on, they came out, it came out with iPads. I loaded up my iPad with the Word of God. I loaded up my iPad with good stuff, with, with just good stuff. And in construction, you know, you guys, you want to do whatever you want to do. But you know what? I'm going to have good stuff come inside of me. And you know how much Word of God in a day you can get inside of you? You know, I'm having good stuff coming inside of being edified and making money. <laughs> and you know what? Time, time happens. I grow in God. Now I buy a car. And you know what? My brother is in my car. And my music is playing. Mm-hmm. That's right. And you know what? We're in two different worlds. And because that Christian music is not, he don't like it. Just because I don't like his music. I mean, it's, it's water and oil. We just don't mix. But you know what? You're in my car. <laughs> Do you know why Jesus sat with sinners? Come on, Jesus sat with sinners. Do you know why he can do what he did? Is because he was more stronger in God than the sinner was in the sin. But a lot of times, the sinner is stronger in the sin than we are in God. So a lot of times, they affect the atmosphere than the, rather we to affect the atmosphere. But you know what? You got to grow in God to a point where you can affect the atmosphere. But that doesn't happen by default. It happens if you do it on purpose. As I said, God and the devil, they both want the screen of your heart. Galatians 5 1 says these words it is for freedom that Christ has set you free therefore don't let 
Don't allow yourselves to be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Don't allow. What are you allowing with the eye gate, the ear gate? Don't allow. God made us a free people. He didn't make us robots. He said, you know, he gave us a free choice. You can watch what you watch. You can listen to what you listen to. You know, sometimes we don't have a choice what we listen to what we watch. Like, for example, we're in the world. Sometimes we don't have a choice. People around us uh, do what they do. But let me tell you, I am talking to those of us. What are you feeding yourself on entertainment when you do have a choice? When you do have a choice to watch that or not to watch that. To put that inside of you or not put that inside of you. And then you know what? Sometimes, and then you want your children to be all, all great. But you know what? Your children, like, like just like Jesus, he says, I do what I see my father do. <laughs> this is what children do. My son, he does what I do. You want your children to be awesome? Well, you got to be awesome. Because <laughs> they do what you do. And if you do what you do, they're going to become what you are. So, be a man and a woman of God. Guard your heart. Don't allow just anything to come inside. Who or what have we befriended? God does not deliver us from our friends. He only delivers us from our enemies. If we allow those things, God's like, okay. Look at the children of Israel. Got into bondage until they hated that junk. They cried out and God delivered it. Why go through a cycle? Deliverance, bondage, deliverance, bondage, deliverance. Why come to... Why come to uh, Saturday night prayer line again because you need to be delivered because you weren't guarding your heart? Why go through that circle over and over where God has steps for you to take where he has a plan and a purpose and a destiny for you? The choice is yours. I mean, we'll take you for deliverance. Don't worry. But you don't have to go that route. God has dominion for you, not deliverance. Come on. So right now, let us all stand, if we can have the worship team come up. You know, I don't want to just speak a message, just a cute, cute message and great. You know, we have to make a decision. What are we going to put inside of it? Because hear me out. Right now, everything might look great. You might be enjoying life and everything might be smooth and roses. But let me tell you, your insides will one day catch up to your outside. And the enemy will, will use any avenues you give him. Don't allow. Right now, I want us to take a moment of our time. If we need to ask God to forgive us from the times we entertain ourselves with the things that actually brought nails into his hands. Come on. Sometimes we, we as people, we entertain ourselves with the things that brought nails into his hands. We are the people of God, the body, the bride of Christ. God is going to come back for a pure bride. Be a pure bride. It's not, by, it's not by our works, but it's by his grace. Work with God. Work with him. Scan your life. If there's any areas you need to repent from and ask God, God, forgive me. I've heard your word. I've heard your word. I want to grow in my faith. I want to allow only good stuff to come inside. I want to be an example for my children. I want to leave a legacy on this earth. Holy Spirit, help me. Right now, take a moment. If you need to repent, ask him to forgive you, to cleanse you. And make a decision to only allow good stuff inside of you. Father, right now we come to you. Come on, open up your lips. We come to you right now. We ask that you would forgive us for, for, for entertaining ourselves with things that brought nails into your hands. God, forgive us if we allowed any subconscious message to go inside of us. Lord, we turn away 
We want to be a people of faith, men and women of God, men and women after your heart. Father, we want to do great works on this earth. Father, we want to see giants being slayed. Father, we want to be your people. We want to be your bride. I ask that you would cleanse us, that you would wash us, that you would deliver us from anything that holds us down, oh God. Father, I pray that you would purify our hearts, cleanse us, and wash us. Do a work which only you can do by your spirit. Father, I don't want this to be legalism. But Father, I pray, God, that you would do what only you can do. Give us a delight after you. We want to delight ourselves in you, God. Father, we don't want to put garbage in and then fight that garbage. God, we want your spirit. We want your word. Do what only you can do with each one. Father, I pray for that person that is just crying out to you. I ask that you, your grace, your anointing, your mercy would meet them at the point of a need. I pray that, that you would help them with that decision they're making to follow you, to put faith, to put goodness, kindness, the fear of the Lord on the inside. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, do what only you can do, I pray. In Jesus. Thanks for watching this sermon. If this was a blessing to you, would you let me know in the comments below what stood out to you from this message? What are you taking home with you from this message? Also, if you enjoyed these messages, would you help us and hit thumbs up to this video and subscribe to our channel so you can get new videos every single week delivered to you on your YouTube app. If you go to hungrygen.com forward slash sermons, you'll actually be able to download the transcript, the notes, and the quotes of this sermon and the rest of all of our sermons free of charge. Until next time.